So today we are going to talk about an innovation in the 19th century that proved to be a big step in the development of archaeology into a proper discipline in science. The three age system! No? Okay. The three age system is a methodological concept developed by C.J. Thompson, a Danish scholar, in 1836. Now, Thompson was a neat freak. There was a lot of mess with the museum artifacts that he was working with, and he just had to do something about it. He published a book where he proposed that prehistoric and early historic museum artifacts could be divided into one of three ages based on the materials that they were made out of. This was a super important development because it allowed archaeologists to organize material culture even though we didn't have any accompanying texts to go with it or to help us along in the process. This was a huge shift in archaeological thought, bringing us away from focusing on ancient texts to letting the objects speak for themselves. Historical documents tend to mess things up anyway. Objects never lie. Like most 19th century schools of thought, it really only reflected the developmental structure in regards to the chronology of Europe, the Mediterranean, as well as the Middle East. It doesn't work at all with most of Asia or Africa because their material culture and development was drastically different. Either way, we still use these terms in the general context as they're easy to understand for most people. Before we get into the three ages, I want to point out and stress that this system is what we call a relative chronology, meaning that we don't have exact dates for when one material was switched for another. This is because the whole world just can't wake up one day and say, boom, okay, we've discovered how to smelt bronze. Everyone from now on will only use bronze and will throw out stone tools immediately. It just, it doesn't work like that. It's like that with any new technology. It takes a while for new techniques and knowledge and methods to spread around the world and even longer for them to become widely used and popular. Look at DVDs. When those things came out, like they were cool and all, but it sure took a lot of convincing for me to start purchasing those instead of my beloved VHS tapes. I still have a thing for those hunks of plastic and would probably still be buying them if they were available and I wasn't so addicted to Netflix. The three ages are quite simple, really. Thompson classified objects into the categories of stone, bronze, and iron. Stone Age then underwent further categorizations. Thank you to John Lubbock for that. It also has three ages. So we've got the Paleolithic, the Mesolithic, and the Neolithic. So the early, middle, and late Stone Ages. I don't really want to get too much into the, into the description. They pretty much speak for themselves. Each age corresponds, obviously, to a development in human manufacturing. Each one is more advanced than the one before it. Each age requires a more refined technique and new technology. As we evolve, so do our methods, and we can even see that today. It's been happening at a stupid fast rate ever since the Industrial Revolution. Stones required tools for shaping and refining. Bronze required knowledge of metal smelting and making alloy for stronger materials, and iron requires an even higher smelting point, and it is a little bit more difficult to extract out of the ground, which means even more advances in kilns and manufacturing. It only goes to show, as we get more organized into civilization, the spread and development of our knowledge increases and speeds up. This is why archaeologists and historians only really use this as part of a general discussion. It's more of a human evolutionary law rather than a proper aging system. As I said before, it doesn't work everywhere either. Many civilizations never followed this timeline. Some kept their stone tools, some skipped the Bronze Age completely and just went right to iron. It's all really relative and we need to keep that in mind when making classifications like this. We still use this age system though, even when talking about modern times. Right now we're supposed to be in the information age and before that we were in the atomic age. It's all fine and dandy to divide up our history into these categories, but there's just no exact dates as to when they begin or end, and this is why more exact dating methods have been developed. So yes, keep using the three-age system to describe things to your unhistorical friends, but please let's keep the dating to the professionals and get some hard facts behind our classifications. As always, a brief write-up and extra resources are found on my website, which is in the link in the description. Don't forget to subscribe as I'll be posting more videos on dating techniques later on, and oh! Follow me on Instagram at digitwithraven. I'm really fun on there, trust me. Stay dirty, my friends.